many people in the watch community are very quick to assume that a quartz watch is a bad watch, but I just can't help but feel that they haven't experienced a 9F quartz watch. Welcome back to Bark and Jack, I'm Adrian, and this is Grand Seiko. This, this is my Grand Seiko. I'm gonna be very complimentary about this watch and about, well, particularly the movement stuff. I'm gonna be focusing on the movement. This video isn't sponsored by Grand Seiko. This is my watch, I spent money on this watch. And this video, I'm gonna talk mainly about the movement and kind of highlight why I think this watch was worth its 3,400 pound retail price. Uh, this, uh, at, this watch actually isn't mine anymore. I've just sold it um, and, the reason I held on to it for so long, I didn't wear it, but I held on to it for so long because the movement in this thing is incredible. The 9F Quartz movement is an amazing movement as it is, but this is a limited edition version. This is the SBGN001, and this is powered by the 9F86, which is uh, essentially the 9F Quartz movement, but on steroids. It's amazing. Grand Seiko launched the first 9F movement in 1993, and that was with the Caliber 9F8. The movement had a handful of innovations inside with awesome names like the backlash auto adjust mechanism, the twin pulse quartz mechanism, and the super sealed cabin. All of these things make the 9F movement an amazing movement. And I do understand why people poo poo the idea of quartz because it, it, it does sound like, just like a calculator, something that, that is dead and, and just, a, uh, an electronic item, something that doesn't have all that much thought that goes into it. But actually the 9F movement has a huge amount of thought that goes into it. It takes two watchmakers to create one movement. It has a full gear train. You can't see it because it's all hidden in this super sealed cabin. The amount of engineering, the amount of watchmaking that goes into this piece really is phenomenal. And it makes for an incredibly accurate watch. Quartz movements are known for being accurate, but they aren't exact. They aren't 100% accurate. Nothing really is. A standard quartz movement, for example, might be accurate to around 15 seconds a month or 180 seconds a year. A standard 9F movement is accurate to 0 0.8 seconds a month or 10 seconds a year. This particular movement is a limited edition 9F86, which is accurate to less than half a second a month, 0 0.4 seconds a month. That's five seconds a year. But that is the tolerance that it has to work within. In reality, it's more likely to be accurate to one second a year. Seiko, Grand Seiko are one of the few vertically integrated watchmakers, which means they actually make stuff themselves. When they say in-house, it is 100% in-house. It's not a watch brand that's just using it as a bit of marketing BS and they've bent the rules. And when they say in-house, it's all a bit of smoke and mirrors, a bit of trickery. These guys do everything themselves. They even go so far as growing their own quartz crystals. Each quartz crystal is unique and the properties that they have can change as temperature changes. To make sure each movement is accurate despite these natural variations with the crystals, Grand Seiko adjusts the programming for every single movement so the integrated circuit matches perfectly to that crystal. Temperature changes can negatively impact the crystal, which means if the movement is to be accurate, the movement needs to understand the temperature. The 9F movement checks the ambient temperature 540 times a day, and then adjusts the movement accordingly. Grand Seiko didn't just keep the accuracy of the 9F movement to timekeeping. They designed the 9F movement to accurately display the time. On normal quartz watches, the second hand has a slight flutter to it. It's easy to see this on a large uh, quartz wall clock. If, if you look at the second hand, you'll see it jumps to the next second, kind of overshoots it, and then springs back again. That is called backlash. The jolting back and forth causes the quartz movement to inaccurately display the seconds as the second hand falls out of sync with the second markers. Grand Seiko didn't want this, so they created the backlash auto adjust mechanism, which is an extra hairspring that sits on the gear train and exerts torque on the gear train as it spins in the opposite direction to the travel of the gear train. This reduces the play between the teeth of the gears and therefore stops the fluttering of the second hand, allowing the second hand and the markers to, to be all in sync, therefore displaying the time accurately. Quartz movements create less torque than mechanical movements, which means quartz hands usually are thinner and lighter than those found on mechanical watches. The development team of Grand Seiko wanted to use the large broad hands that have become part of Grand Seiko's design, that kind of brand image. That meant that the engineers had to figure out a way of getting the 9F movement to deliver enough torque to move these larger, chunkier hands. The result was the twin pulse control motor. 
the second hand looks like it's jumping from one second to the next in an immediate, very exact movement. The reality is it's actually ticking twice in one second. This is it slowed down to a third of the speed of real time. This means that the torque that we have on tap only has to move the hands half of the way rather than the whole way, meaning that Grand Seiko can use these larger, chunkier hands. Carrying on with the idea of displaying time accurately, Grand Seiko were the first people who created a quartz movement that had an instant date change. The movement has been created, so it will never prematurely change a date, and the date will always change within five minutes of midnight. Servicing the Ninth Moon isn't all that easy, as it's not your standard movement. It is quite special, it's quite complex. But also, it's been designed so it doesn't really need to be serviced. However, you might want to regulate it and you will need to change a battery. There's a little control on the movement to make it easier to regulate. Also, the battery is going to last about three years, so you're going to have to change it at some point. And Grand Seiko have made it so you don't have to send the watch back to them just to get a battery changed. They've hidden everything that is delicate in this very fancy little thing called a super sealed cabin, meaning that you can open up the watch access the battery, change the battery, and screw it all back together again, safe in the knowledge that you haven't damaged anything. This super seal cabin holds everything that's delicate. The gear train is hidden inside this super seal container. No air, no dust, no moisture. Nothing can get inside this airtight little compartment. The fact is airtight also prevents the lubricants from drying up, effectively giving the 9th movement a service interval of 50 years, which is just crazy. If you want to make sure that the stuff inside the super seal cabin is working, is operating as it should, they've thought of that as well. You've got little ruby peepholes so you can see what is going on on the inside. Just to touch on the watch a little bit, I have really enjoyed wearing this watch. For, I don't know why I haven't connected with it. I don't, it might be because of the yellow touches. It might just because it's got very highly polished areas. But for whatever reason, I just haven't really felt a, a bond with this watch as uh, compared to my other watches. The one thing that annoys me about this watch is uh, the bracelet, or rather the lugs. The bracelet is very comfy, it's more the lugs. So the lugs are 19 millimeters wide. And that's frustrating because over at barkandjack.com they don't have, they haven't had 90 millimeter wide straps. And so the really nice native straps that they have over at barkandjack.com just don't fit between the lugs. NATO straps give watches a really nice tool look. It brings out the tool look on a watch. And it's a shame that I can't do that with this thing. I have heard a rumor that the guys over at barkandjack.com will be getting 90 millimeter wide NATO straps, along with 18, 20, 21, and 22 millimeter wide straps. But right now it's just 20 and 22 millimeter. This particular movement has a GMT function added to the 9F movement. They, Grand Seiko tried to put a, a GMT function on the 9F movement originally. They couldn't get the instant date change to work alongside having an hour hand that moved accurately and independently to all the other hands. 25 years later, they managed to create, a, well, I haven't really shared the details around it, but they say this is the jumper that allows the hour hand to now snap back and forth in hour increments and without interference of any of the other hands, allowing the movement to maintain its accuracy. So this is why I love this watch and this movement. It's geeky in a different way from what we're used to. It, people say quartz watches don't have soles or, or they're, they're not as impressive as mechanical watches. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, the things that are going on inside this movement blow my mind just the same as what goes on inside a normal traditional mechanical watch. If I had the money, I would be keeping this watch without a doubt. The movement inside is more than enough for me to appreciate what is going on here. And I guess a big takeaway for me as someone who's experiencing watches, learning about watches and, and on a journey with watches is that it has completely opened my eyes to quartz watches. The awesomeness that is quartz watches. I just think there needs to be more love for quartz watches in the watch community. Um, as I mentioned that this is sold. And the watch that's going to replace this is another quartz watch, um, potentially. There's a few ideas. Anyway, guys, let me know if you've found a quartz watch which you've been impressed with the, the movement of or, or you've connected with a quartz watch. So there's something around quartz that, that stood out. Um, or equally share a comment of why you really dislike quartz watches. And I'm yet to come across a solid argument as to why someone dislikes a quartz watch. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. If you like this video, then do give it a thumbs up. If you like the style of this video, then hit that subscribe button down the bottom there and a little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you want to check out articles, jump over to barkandjack.com. There are articles every other day that are going up. Check out the watch straps over at barkandjack.shop along with our watch pouches. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack. I'll see you guys next time.
Take care.